The integrator of the future, the industry 4.0 integrator. So, well, 4.0 solutions, Intellic, I mean, Intellic is actually built in this model. And what we've proven over the last few years is that this model works. And, and in fact, it is the most effective model for deploying enterprise solutions, okay? So what does the integrator of the future do? Number one, they specialize. And they specialize in enterprise solutions, okay? Number one. Number two, they have business intelligence people. They have everyone at every layer of the stack. And just a quick reminder, so machine learning or cloud, ERP, MES, SCADA, HMI, PLC. Vast majority of integrators are in this space. The integrator of the future is here. That is that they have specialists at each layers of that stack, okay? Number three, they're agile. We talked about the waterfall project management. The integrator of the future uses an agile project management methodology specifically, whether it's vanilla scrum or any of the scrum styles, okay? But they use agile project management. Number four, they're lean. What does that mean? They don't have a billion salespeople. They don't have a billion applications engineers. They don't have a shit ton of administration. They're a lean operation, and there's a reason for that. And it's because the people that you need in order to be able to service each layer of that, each layer of the stack are expensive. You can't spend all that money on administration. The reason that you're not paying your engineers enough right now, the reason that you're paying you're trying to pay everyone $80,000 a year and you're lamenting that you got to pay $110,000 on an engineer. By the way, the average automation engineer or controls engineer or integrator who's making $100,000 a year, if he becomes a consultant, he makes 250 dollars overnight. So the, the, the reality is you can't bring them in and, and try to pay them eighty dollars to $100,000 a year when their actual revenue, if they're worth anything, their actual revenue is three fifty dollars to five hundred dollars every year, okay? So what's gonna happen is you have to stay lean so that you can pay those engineers what they're gonna demand in the open market, okay? They're gonna go to platforms like Upwork, okay? Which, by the way, we use, we leverage Upwork. We've hired several freelancers off of Upwork and it's a phenomenal platform. And I can tell you that there will be integrators that are built around the Upwork platform. They don't even hire any of their own engineers. What they do is they hire their engineers through Upwork and work with them exclusively through that platform. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why you would do it and platforms like it. So number four, they're lean. Number five, they're agnostic. Why? Why are they agnostic? Because they're developing enterprise solutions. There is no hardware or software manufacturer out there who can answer all of the problems for a customer who needs an enterprise solution. So you've got to be agnostic. You can't sign vendor agreements. You can't allow your vendors to tell you that if you want a discount on Wonderware, then you can't work with Ignition. Or if you want a discount on Allen Bradley products, then you can't use Factory Studio as your SCADA system. I mean, if you want those things, and this is real world stuff. Anyone who works in integrate, as an integrator knows that these things are real these vendor agreements are real, you have to be agnostic. I mean, this is the integrator of the future. You got to be agnostic, period. All right, so what, is the, what does the organization look like, though? So the organization doesn't look like that previous board that I showed you. That organization looks something more like this. And you can see this on Intellix website. We use this model. This is a T-based model, okay? This is a T-based team. You essentially build your organization out of wheels. You basically build wheels. So in this case, we're just going to look at the engineering wheel. That is just the solutions architects, the engineering wheel. So the bottom part of the wheel is the one thing that that team has in common. So in this case, this team is, they're all going to work in IIoT. They're all IIoT people. We've built wheels where the bottom part of the T is everyone develops an ignition. But you can build your team this way easily. So they all work in IIoT. And then what we have is we may have someone who is a Python, VBA, JS, Node, BI, subject matter expert. So the top part of the T is the subject matter that you are an expert in. You're an SME, okay? We may have, in this case, we may have our PLC SME. In this case, we may have our database, our SQL and NoSQL subject matter expert. Okay. In this case, I may have an, an ignition and I may have a factory studio SME. I may have, a, this person may be the Kepware SME. Okay. This person may be the Maple Systems SME. So you build matrices that contain all your subject matter experts. Your sales staff sells to the strength. Okay. You only architect solutions to your strengths, obviously, right? So if you're going to develop enterprise solutions, you have to have subject matter experts. Why? Because these people are expensive, very expensive. Okay. If your customer is going to pay $150 to $250 an hour for their services, they're expensive. Okay? So then what we don't have are middle managers. The subject matter experts are the manager of their subject matter. 
okay? And you can do this in any part of your organization. This could be your sales department, this could be project management, this could be panel building, this could be your design staff. You basically build your organization out of wheels. But you don't have middle managers who are unqualified to tell the Python developer how to develop his code. Okay? You don't have a project manager, middle manager, who cut his teeth 10 years ago on Slick 500 tell, or on the original panel view 10 years ago, telling the Ignition developer how to develop their screens. I mean, and you have lots of subject matter experts, UI, you name it, the whole deal, okay? Protocols. Your organization is going to look something like this. Your organization is going to be stocked full of subject matter experts. You know what's interesting? The organization looks like the IIoT. Exactly. The integrator of the future, the integrator of the future builds an ecosystem within their organization to support or mirror the ecosystem that they are contributing and drawing from. Right? Again, understand that the integrator of yesterday is built on the Industry 3.0 model. And when Fortune 500 companies, when all of our clients are asking why are their projects failing? Why is it that you guys come in and everything's going fine, but our previous integrator who we love, and they're awesome, great people, smart people, it's not that they have the wrong people, they've got the wrong structure. They have the wrong business model. So what we've done here is we've built the dream model. And this is what the integrators of the future have to do. Part of what 4.0 Solutions is going to do is we're going to teach other integrators how to build this type of organization. And then what we're going to do is we're going to recommend to the customers who come to us, whether that customer is an integrator, whether that customer is a machine builder, whether it's an end user, a Fortune 500 company, and they say, we have this dream, help us accomplish it. We're not just going to show them which hardware they should be using. We're not going to show them just which software they should be using for their specific solution. We're also going to tell them which partners they should be using. Hey, here are three integrators that we know that are absolutely right for the problem that you have. And go select from that three. Have them all quote it. Have them all come in and interview with you. This is the integrator of the future, right? The integrator of the future is going to take this approach.